Hey everybody, Sophie from Sage Designs here. I've got Emma with me, our floral studio manager. And today we're gonna to walk you through how to make a wrist corsage. We like using these uh, gold metal bands. They also come in silver and copper. Gold tends to be our most popular color. Um, and we design on these. So we're gonna show you how we get from this guy to this guy. And Emma is going to walk us through it. Emma, could you start to kind of walking everybody through the materials that we have in front of us right now? Yeah, so I've got obviously the wrist corsage. Um, I have this ribbon that I'm gonna show I wrap around this to um, act as traction. I've got some glue, I've got sticky tape, wire, and then I've got all of my floral and my clippers. And these glue dots, very, very important. These are super great. Yeah, so we'll walk you through what we use each of these for as we go through the process. So what's step one? Step one, I always start with prepping my band. So I cut off a couple inches of the ribbon and I grab my glue dots. I put one on the top in the center and I put one on the bottom in the center. Oops. There. And then I just stick it on and wrap it around the top. So that's just gonna provide a bit of a better surface to attach the blooms to and make sure that nothing falls off. So yeah, because the glue doesn't like holding onto the metal as well. Yeah. So this kind of provides a little bit of textural uh, surface for the glue to kind of seep into and grab onto so those flowers don't fall yeah. off. This is a rib uh, ribbon as well. So it's yeah. got some grooves in it. Um, so then I do picking up my blooms. So I want to make basically two little boutonnieres is what I start off with. So I try to pick um, three different blooms of different sizes for this. So I go a large, a medium, and then something a bit smaller. And I take off all of the leaves and I take, whoops, one of these pieces of wire. Um, it's pretty thick. I want it to be able to provide stability and give me the ability to bend the flowers after it's attached. So I'm just taking little pieces about yay big and you want to stick it through the bulky part of the flower at the top. I don't know what it's called. You know what that part's <laughs> called? I don't know. It's I actually don't know. Right underneath the flower head, you stick it through, bend the wire down. And I do that to all of them at the same time. And what's that going to do? This is gonna, once I tape it together, it gives me a bendy stem. Right, um, so you and can it, kind of move the stem around and, and play with it a little yeah, more than you yeah. would have otherwise. And it also prevents like any stem breakage. Um, now I've got a wire instead of the stem if something were to happen. I'm just gonna nice. prep the other ones. Like that. So we generally prefer wrist corsages when we're designing. Some people still request having a corsage that they would pin to their lapel, but we find that the wrist corsages are a little bit more elegant um, and flexible. We don't always know what moms or grandmothers are wearing, and so um, pins can be a little bit tricky because if they don't have quite the right fabric that's stiff enough to hold up the corsage, pinning can be really tricky. These um, uh, cuffs are actually very flexible too. So you can actually like pull them open or tighten them closed a little bit. So if somebody's got a bit of a larger wrist or a smaller wrist, it can accommodate for that. So that's why we generally go with the wrist corsage option. So now I'm, I'm starting at the very top. This is a, a tape that's like stretchy and the more you stretch it, the more it sticks to itself. Um, so I'll just start over here. So yeah, right up to the base of the flower and then I'm twisting it pretty tightly. Sometimes it breaks when you do that, you just gotta be careful. And then I'm just quickly like on a diagonal spinning it around to cover the whole stem. Um, do that to all of them at the same time. I like to do all of the same step all at once to speed things up. These can be pretty tedious. <laughs> Efficiency is really important. So Emma, if you were doing like 10 of these, would you go through the process of cutting all your stems, wiring all your stems, wrapping all your stems for all 10 of them at once? Yeah. yeah. That also gives me the guarantee that like they're all going to look similar, that I've spread out like the sizes of the blooms between how many items I'm making. Yeah, that makes sense. And whoops, finicky. Perfect. So we use the same process when we're making boutonnieres. Yeah. 
Yeah, so you'll basically see what I do here. So I always start with my largest flower. So now I'm gonna just tilt the head towards myself. So you can see that I, I now have the ability to, to bend it. Um, I always back it with a little bit of greenery. And at that point, I'll also shove in um, <laughs> like just a smaller texture there. And then same thing, I'm gonna take the sticky tape and wrap it as tightly as I can around there. It's a lot of wrapping, yeah. but every time you wrap, you're adding a little bit more stability. Yeah. You're also making each of those stems a little bit sticky so that when you wrap them together, they're kind of grabbing onto that stickiness of each other stem, mm -hmm. um, which helps them stick together even better. Yeah. So then I add my third bloom to my little cluster here. So if this was a boutonniere, I could pretty much stop here. Um, but... Yeah, you could add your little ribbon and yeah. be done, and that would be it. It would be lovely. Um, perfect. So then for making the corsage, I, I make this really short. So I know that I've, I've taped all down there for stability, but I'm just going to chop pretty high up because I want to be able to hide that. So now it's just like a short little cluster. And same thing on the other side. So I generally try to make one a little bit bigger than the other. So this will be my short side. And I don't throw out any of these like leaves that I'm um, taking off because you can go in afterwards and put them in individually um, for little textures. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you're doing this for a business, um, every little piece of product that you have is money. So mm -hmm. you don't want to be throwing things out that you could still potentially be using um, because that's just money that you're throwing <laughs> in the garbage. But, whoops. It's very sticky. Your ha my hands are sticky right now. <laughs> so everything's sticking to them. This is why we do all the steps at once, yeah. right? So you get all the stickiness <laughs> out of the hands. way in one go rather than transferring the stickiness over and over again <laughs> through the process. Right. So you said you make one short side a little bit shorter, Emma. Like, why is that? Um, so that I can stagger them underneath each other. So same thing. I'm going to cut this guy super short, basically like right where I'm able to connect. Um, and then I'm going to come back to my band and grab my glue dots. Um, I put, oops. <laughs> Perfect. Get rid of that. <laughs> My fingers are very sticky. <laughs> and I just add two glue dots there. It's just going to give me a little bit of stickiness for getting those stems in place. Um, yeah, and then I'm going to stagger them together so that they basically like close each other off and get them onto the band in the right place. And sometimes you've got to like wiggle this around. Um, but I've got them on a diagonal, so I still have plenty of space on the ribbon um, to be gluing more flowers to. Um, at that point, the, I, I wouldn't trust this, so I'm just going to go in and add a little bit of glue so that um, there's more holding it in. We never want something to fall apart on site. So I make a little uh, blob there. This glue works better when it's tacky. So right now it's sitting there getting prepped for as I'm about to start um, adding new flowers, I can just dip them in and then they're, it's good to go. So just adding a little bit of glue underneath, like at the seam there where these meet the ribbon and that's gonna hold on really nicely. So now I go in and I literally, right underneath that like large chunk of the, where the rose meets the stem is where I'm making my next few cuts. So you. I don't know if you can see, but I have like a hole on this side and a hole on that side, and my top is pretty well taken care of. But I'm just gonna, like I said, dip that flower in the glue. It probably looks a bit barbaric that I'm grabbing the flower by the head, but they're really resilient. And then I'm just placing it in, and you may need to hold on to that for a little bit while the glue sets. Um, but for the most part, since I've let it sit out to dry, it's pretty good right now. So that covered my hole on that side, and I'm just going to take another larger bloom for the other side. So the glue that we're using is Oasis, Oasis Floral Adhesive. Uh, this is one of the best options, and we've been using this one for years. Um, like Emma said, you want to let it kind of get in the air a little bit so it becomes tacky because the 
less time that it's in the air, the longer you're going to have to hold it onto mm -hmm. that corsage, which for efficiency purposes is not the greatest way to go about it. No. Um, Cause you will just sit there for a minute, two minutes holding a single balloon. If you don't give it a chance to get a little bit tacky first. So like, yeah, just like wave it around for a second. Yeah. Give it some air. Sometimes as it's becoming tacky, it actually will become a little bit foggy. So you'll know it's really, really clear when it's super wet. And as it gets more tacky, it actually becomes a little bit foggy. So that's when you kind of know that it's ready to stick into your arrangement. Yeah. So most of my mechanics are covered at this point with the flowers. So now is when I'm going to be going in with these like individual leaves. I've got some pomonium. Mm -hmm. Sorry, just blanked. <laughs> so I'm literally cutting like the tiniest little pieces. These you, those little bits of texture, yeah, right? and these you don't need to worry so much about the glue setting because it's a tiny little stem and it's not like weight bearing. Like the rose, mm -hmm. you need to be really careful um, that you're letting that glue dry because the rose is so heavy it'll just fall off. Uh, but this stuff just sticks right in. Sometimes with these little ruscus leaves, I just like to make them a tiny oh. bit shorter um, and give them like a, a straight edge. And yeah. Yeah, you want to have some presence, but you don't want it to like overwhelm yeah. the the piece. And the way that I choose to stick stuff in, I'm I'm trying to still cover mechanics so they go in at a bit of an angle, um, and just making it look like it is attached to the rose next to it, uh, rather than just like jamming stuff in randomly. But yeah, so pretty, such <laughs> a small little texture, and adds so much to yeah. the arrangement. Because you really could stop after the roses and the leaves, yeah. but those little bits of limonium add a lot to the overall look and make it the whole thing look a little bit more delicate. Yeah. And it's crazy, like, the coverage that you would get from a tiny piece as well because yeah. it's just adding, like, a like air and, yeah. Yeah, um, it really does. It adds a lot. Perfect. So I'm pretty happy with that. Oops. So then how would we store this now that we've got this all ready to go? Uh, so now we have a finishing spray. I forget what it's called. Is it just... <laughs> Talk about blanking. Um, we have a spray. You could just use water as well. Um, we use a special spray. Um, but I yeah, will, you... I'll find the name of it and I'll put it in the description yeah. or up here somewhere. <laughs> um, before I knew about the spray, I would just use water. So you just use a mister bottle, just give it a spray, and then we put it into plastic containers. Um, finishing touch that's what finishing it's touch okay yeah yeah <laughs> it would come to me eventually yeah so we just put um like a piece of tissue through the cuff so that it doesn't fall over in the container and stick it in the fridge yeah and we want to make sure that it's in some sort of container when it's in the fridge so that uh the it doesn't dry out in the air the container helps to keep that moisture mm -hmm. inside and in the fridge it can last up to a week i'd say pretty comfortably yeah. Yeah. and still be really nice on event day so we try to make our corsages usually two days before the event. Max. Usually the day before the event is what yeah. we're really aiming for. Even though it will last, we like to send them out as fresh as possible. Mm -hmm. And I think that's pretty much it. Do you have anything to add to that, Emma? I don't think so. Okay. So we've got two lovely little <laughs> corsages. Thanks for watching and joining along with us today. Uh, join us next time when we teach you how to make boutonniere pocket squares, which is going to be really fun. So we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.